G'day guys, Aaron here. Welcome back to the garage for the sales up conversion. I think this is episode number three. And this one, we're gonna be installing the dagger board case, making up the mast support, gluing it all in place. And we're gonna do a test fit of the sail once it's all dried. So I uh, can't wait to show you guys. Dagger board case needs to go in this slot here. You'll see that I've got the cheeks of the dagger board case exactly the same length from this frame to this joint here. So it's really quite simple. All we'll I have to do is follow that line there and there, and that should fit perfectly. So that should now slot in there pretty well. We may need some fine tuning. But that is where the dagger ball case is gonna go. I've intentionally left the dagger board case about five millimeters higher than this center stringer because I need to trim a section off here so it's flush with the bottom of the, the sup. I'm gonna be using the width of the pencil to mark my line in here. That's the dagger board case looking the goods. So the dagger board case now fits the whole bottom perfectly It'll be flush here and flush there. Okay, so there's the mask base all cut out. I had to go from either side because my bit isn't long enough to go all the way through because it's 200 millimeters long. Now it's time to mark out where it's gonna go on the bow and for that, I need to cut out my center stringer. So I originally put plan to put the center of the mast here on this dot, which is exactly 400 millimeters from the leading edge of the dagger board. However, because I wanna have it, give it some lateral strength and support, I'm going to cut the center stringer here and then this will be fixed to this bulkhead here and then I'll have another bulkhead coming up with an arch to come from side to side and put our deck fitting in. With the mast section fully fitted into the bow section, it was time to get started on making the bulkhead, which will join the forward deck to the upper deck. And for that, I measured either side on a piece of three mil plywood to get the width. And then I raised it up to get the height where it meets the middle of the mast support. And then using the same three millimeter ply as I'll use for the deck, I measured out a fair curve joining all three points. By setting the depth of my circular saw to only four millimeters and very shallow, I was able to follow that curve on that bulkhead all the way around with only a little bit of adjustment afterwards to the sander. With the replacement deck panel and curved bulkhead in position, I got a really good feel for how the new SUP's going to look. I'm pretty excited about it. 
And next it was on to shaping the foil. And this is a, a big job. It took about an hour and a half. And I just took my time at it. Started with 80 grit on my belt sander. And I followed my marks and I kept it moving. I didn't want to dig an edge into the board because that would certainly ruin it. So it's, the whole idea was keep it moving, keep the arms nice and loose and just have lots of patience. Oh, so, so, whew, that is a good hour and a half worth of sanding. First with 80 grit on the belt sander and then uh, 80 grit on the orbital sander and the 120 grit and that's now our finished foil. And as far as hand shaped foils go, I mean, you get a look at that section there. I'm happy with that. We're not racing, it's gonna to work to windward. So next thing is to uh, give that a clean and hope that a couple of days of Next, I made up some unthickened epoxy to pre-wet the surfaces that I'll be gluing my daggerboard case and mask support to. I then used that same batch of epoxy, added in my filler to get ready to glue the centerboard case and the mask support in position. As I was gluing this, you could see I was pretty liberal with the epoxy. This particular part of the sup will get quite a fair amount of load to it laterally, that is from side to side. So I wanted to make sure I had plenty of epoxy in there. I didn't have any gaps, I had more than I needed. And at first I thought I might've made a mess of it because there was a, a lot of squeeze out and I got a bit, uh, a bit out of control at one point. But by the end of it, I cleaned it all up. It looks great and it's really strong. So I'm, I'm happy how it turned out. So the next day when the epoxy was fully cured, I used my spade bit, which is a 16 millimeter spade bit. The Dagobord slot itself is 18 millimeters wide. So 16 millimeters was a perfect size. And the length of the bit itself was too short. So I had to mark, use the very tip to cut out locating holes from the top. And then I got underneath the sup with some protective eyewear, of course. And then I bored out from the underside. And the beautiful thing about these spade bits is that they have very sharp edges. So it cut through the fiberglass and the plywood perfectly without any splintering, without any, you know, any damage to the board on the other side. You can see them trimming those out. And then to connect them up, I use my jigsaw with a very fine tooth blade on it. Join all the little lines between the cutout holes. And this is the end result, a nice clear daggerboard slot. So I couldn't resist putting the sail in there. And I gotta say, I'm pretty happy with how that's looking. Obviously I still need to put a sheeting position back in here on the stern. Probably do an eye here and an eye here to an elevated sheeting point here, which will then run back to, to where I'll be sitting. But yeah, that looks pretty cool. All right guys, thanks for watching. Really appreciate everybody getting behind this project simply by watching the videos, liking them, adding a comment and subscribing. So um, can't wait to get out on the water with this thing. It's gonna be, I think it's gonna be heaps of fun. But until then, uh, I'll see you guys in the next video. Take care.